If you've been fighting with breakouts and not getting anywhere, no matter what you do or what you try, it could be fungal acne that's causing you all your grief. And I'm gonna tell you how to know if that's the case and what to do about it in this video. Well, hey everybody, welcome back to Skincare with Chris Gibson. If you're new, I'm Chris. I'm here to help you find skincare that will work for you, not empty your wallet, and not do more harm than good. So if that's your thing, hit the subscription button and that tiny little notification bell so that you know when my new videos are up each week. All right, so if you're dealing with acne breakouts and you're not getting anywhere, no matter what you treat them with, as I said, you could be dealing with fungal acne rather than bacterial or hormonal acne, which there is a difference. In fact, it's really not even acne, it's Malassezia folliculitis. I know, really long scientific word, but I know that, that fungal acne is a word that we see a lot. A lot of influencers have been doing a lot of videos on it of late, and I don't care what they tell you, it isn't really acne. Much, much a different mechanism at play here than say what causes breakouts from bacteria or hormonal changes in the body. Just not the same thing. Acne vulgaris has a very definite medical description attached to it with the different types and the different levels of severity. Whereas what we're dealing with here is fungal in nature. So how do you know if that's what you're dealing with? Well, the first thing that's important to know is what it looks like and what's causing it. Now, fungal acne shows up as inflamed, itchy, small little clusters of white bumps or whiteheads. And these are really just small pus-filled bumps that occur down around the actual hair follicle in each and every pore. Again, so it's Malassezia folliculitis because it has to do with the actual hair follicle. Now, this often occurs in the T-zone, the forehead, the chin, the nose, those oily areas, and also the chest and the back. And the telltale sign that this is Fungal acne rather than bacterial or hormonal acne breakouts is that again, it's red, inflamed, and itchy. Whereas other acne conditions are not itchy. They occur deeper down in the pore where bacteria or acne bacteria is trapped and festering in a blocked pore. This is not the same thing. So these will be itchy, almost like hives or a rash. Now, since it's not acne bacteria that's causing the problem, obviously acne products designed to attack acne bacteria are not gonna work well. In fact, one of the things we wanna do is stay away from those type of products because they can be very irritating to already sensitive skin, especially if they have ingredients like benzoyl peroxide. Frustrating, I know, but the good news is, is once we know it's fungal acne that we're dealing with and we apply the appropriate treatments, then you're gonna see very quick, very good results with your complexion. Now, fungal acne again is caused by malassezia, which is a yeast that lives on everyone's skin. The problem is with some of us is that our immune system doesn't really like it when it gets out of balance. So you gotta think about your skin has a biome and your skin's microbiome manages this balance of good microorganisms and bad or not so good microorganisms on the skin surface. And sometimes this yeast gets out of balance and that can happen for a lot of reasons. It can be triggered by changes in your diet, your environment, and even your overall health. Now, since Malassezia yeast is a yeast, it likes warm, damp environment. So things like workouts, heavy sweating, if you're outside during the summer and you don't cleanse the skin right away, it can let this fungus get out of balance on your skin. And then that's what causes the reaction and the bumps. So it's really, really important to keep your skin clean and dry. Now yeast also likes sugar and carbohydrates. So it's not surprising that when people cut back on refined sugars, processed foods, a lot of times they see an improvement in the skin condition. So that's two things you can do right off the bat, keeping your skin clean and dry and cutting back on sweets. All right, so what do we do about fungal acne as far as the skincare routine goes? Well, it's some very simple steps that you can take to really alleviate this problem. Well, first and foremost, we want to make sure again that we stay away from any acne label products that have ingredients like benzoyl peroxide because that's not going to work. That's only gonna irritate the skin and what we wanna do is rebalance that microbiome and stop the fungal growth. So using a product formulated to address the yeast is very, very important. A product like Selsun Blue or Nizoral, those are shampoos, and yes, I'm going a little bit off label here with these products. And the reason these are helpful is because they are formulated to attack the Melissa yeast or the fungus. And while they are shampoos designed for the scalp, they work very, very well as a replacement for at least one cleansing per day 
on the skin. Now it's really, really important that when you use these products that you allow that the lather to sit on the skin for about two minutes because it has to have time to address the fungus. So if you rinse it right off, it's not gonna do that. So again, we're going a little off label, but this will really make a big difference in the amount of yeast on the skin and should calm this condition down pretty quickly. The great news is there's not a whole lot of changes you need to make after that to your skincare routine. You do wanna think about applying a product like niacinamide to help calm the inflamed skin down and change the skin's environment just enough to sort of prohibit that yeast from coming back. Now, the product that I usually recommend for niacinamide is the Ordinary's Niacinamide, which is a very inexpensive product and it's pretty easy to find. You also wanna follow that up with a moisturizer, but you wanna make sure that you're using a water-based moisturizer. And I usually recommend for this, Neutrogena's Hydro Boost for extra dry skin because it is fragrance-free, water gel-based. It's gonna do a really good job of hydrating the skin. And again, keeping that skin environment such that it doesn't allow much room for that yeast to get out of hand. Very simple changes to your skincare routine, they can make a huge difference. Now, as always, if these things do not work and you're still having fungal acne breakouts, it's really important to see a dermatologist because they do have oral antifungal medications that you can take and other treatments that you can use to get that condition under control. So that's always, always recommended. Now, I hope this video was helpful to you in identifying if fungal acne is actually what you have going on and the steps, simple ones, that you can take to address that issue. Also, be sure and check out my other videos on how to deal with acne breakouts and how to perfect your skincare routine. I'll put those for you right over here. Thank you guys so much for watching, supporting the channel. I love you, stay beautiful, and I'll see you over on that next video.